What is up dudes and dudettes, it's your buddy A-A-Ron here and welcome back to another video. Yeah, we're working on the G35 Twin Turbo Fully Forged Boosted Build today. Oh, what's that? What's that behind me? Oh, check it out dudes, we got that new Fully Forged Short Block actually. Uh, just put it onto the stand. Oh my goodness, look at that. That thing looks so beautiful, even though it's just the underside of it. You see the crank, you see the pistons. Oh my goodness, guys, I'm so stoked. This thing is so clean, too. They really, really did a great job with cleaning it up and doing doing the build on the block. IPP right there, that's Import Park Pro. Um, if you guys don't know, you can check them out. I got their Stage 1 short block. And even though it being Stage 1 is still pretty expensive, but uh, it was done professionally. It's covered under warranty. So uh, if anything mechanically happens to it, it's covered and I can just send it back to them, uh, which is awesome. They also helped me out with the core charge um, when I ship back the old one. So I just I put my rod knocked one in here and we're going to send that back and I'll get a little bit more money back. Uh, but man, this turbo build, I was just thinking about it. I just posted on my story. I'm like, this turbo build is really freaking expensive like dude this better be like a dream car fucking build and i <laughs> this better be worth it you know what i'm saying because it's just it's just so much fucking money but when i said that a lot of people were like bro i, I it's worth it trust me it is definitely worth it and uh when i finished up with this whole build and i got everything running i do want to do uh how much i spent video because it's just a lot you know <laughs> anyways guys i got a couple interesting things that i'm going to be doing today uh i got the the short block um flipped upside down right now because we're going to be working on uh, removing this girdle and replacing it with the billet girdle that we got from Z1 Motorsports. That's the Dynasty girdle. I think it's going to be better uh, than the original one, especially when we're pushing 500, 600 horsepower. At least that's the goal, you know? So in this video, I'm going to be changing that out. Um, we got Matthew, uh, the other guy who's also boosting his uh, G35 right now with an AAM kit, uh, twin turbos, uh, Garrett turbos. Oh my God, I think it's going to be freaking sick. We're going to be pretty much running like right around the same time. We're both going through like all of the final like ordering of all the small like parts and everything that we need. Um, I, I'm still like stuck in this fucking money hole right now trying to figure out, I thought I was finished guys, but I still need gauges, I still need uh, the mass airflow sensor and stuff like that. So uh, he's actually coming here because I'm buying a clutch off of him. It's gonna be a dual, uh, a dual clutch. I forgot the name, I'll put it right here. Uh, but it's that one, it's really expensive and it's pre-owned so I'm getting a killer deal on it, especially from Matthew. So he's coming over, we're gonna see him. And we're gonna we're gonna get a new clutch today. Also in this video, I would like to set up our fuel return kit, um, or at least get the the harder part of it done because the engine's not in there yet. So we're not gonna be able to put our, our fuel regulator um, or or this little guy um, up there on the fuel rail just as of yet. So what I want to do is run the lines, and I want to set up the fuel pump with these parts. Um, so we got to remove the fuel pump. We got to put these little gadgets on there, drill through the fuel pump a little bit. Um, and then run the line through underneath the car, which is awesome. They actually, Nissan put like a spare like line holder um, throughout all of the fuel lines that are already being run there. So I don't have to add any brackets or anything like that. We can just put it right there on the stock holder and we'll be good for our fuel return system. Then finish it up when we got the motor uh, into the car, um, which won't be for a little bit. Tomorrow I'm gonna be going to pick up the heads. So I'm gonna be filming that and that'll probably be the next video. Um, but today, I just want to get a couple things done. I want to start producing some good content for you guys. So let's fucking get started. So this is our first ever billet mod on the G35. Check it out guys, super shiny. I just gotta figure out which way it goes. You can see that dynasty, it's pretty nice. You know what, it actually has a cut right here, probably like in the, in the billet itself, probably for the dipstick. So where's the dipstick, right here. So I think it goes this way, there we go. Yeah, so you guys can see the dipstick holes right here and it comes out and will probably go right through here to obviously check the oil. Wow, that's so fucking nice. <laughs> Damn, check it out, yo. Oh my god, this shit is so clean. Super shiny, super strong. What up, Matt? Yo, yo. <laughs> What's We're back. Bro? We're back. Yo, this man is blessing me with this clutch. What was it called again? Exidy, I think it's the twin carbon disc. Carbon R, maybe. See that little carbon weave action? Yo. And how sick is that? 
Whoa! They got a lot crazy. of life left too. Holy shit, they are so light that is. Whoa! I, I literally picked it up like thinking it was gonna be way heavier. Yo, check out this exited clutch. Yo, oh my gosh. That's exactly what we need to complete the powertrain on the beast over here. Look at that, it even matches the engine bay. That's fucking sick. So I didn't even realize this does come with the flywheel. I'm not sure if I have to run that flywheel because I do have a JWT flywheel, which is only 14 pounds. I think it is a little bit lighter than this one. I'm not too sure. So I'm gonna reach out to Exidy. I'm gonna check out, I'm gonna check out if I can use my flywheel because it's brand new and I would like to, and then maybe I can sell this uh, this flywheel here. Anyways guys, we're gonna go ahead and continue uh, finishing up this billet girdle, I'll get that installed. I asked a couple people about you know what they think about running this tray, they said it'll be fine, I mean it's whatever. You can actually buy the version of this Dynasty girdle with that tray, um, but I think we'll be okay. The way it's shaped over here should, should help with the splash, and I'm also gonna be spacing the lower oil pan to add some more oil in there. Um, so we should be okay. All right, guys. So the torque specs for these main bearing cap studs, uh, they're going to be pretty much going to work your way from the inside uh, towards the outside. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on the inside. Then on the outside, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. You're going to want to torque them all down between 24 and 28 pounds. And then you're going to go ahead and turn it 90 degrees and then they'll be good. So you're going to do that all in the torque sequence. We're going to go ahead and knock that out right now. We got our Dynasty billet girdle installed and torqued down to spec, and uh, yeah, I think it's pretty tight, I think it's ready to go. Always cool to see engine parts looking like that before they get all dirty from the oil. But um, yeah, so that pretty much makes our thickness go from this much to this much, um, also um, with stronger type of uh, metal. Uh, compared to this stock girdle right here. Unfortunately, there are no holes for that uh, that tray right there, so we'll be installing that, but it's okay, whatever. It's a little dark outside, so I am gonna go ahead and just rip out that fuel pump. You guys have seen me take out the fuel pump plenty of times on this channel, so I'm sure you guys know how to do it by now. Um, but I'm gonna go run and pull out that fuel pump, and we're gonna start um, applying our CJM uh, kit to the fuel pump. We gotta do some modifications to the pump housing. So this, so this little piece right here is gonna be the main portion of our uh, install today. Um, of course, uh, as well as that big line, we're gonna be running it. But first we've gotta drill this into the fuel pump housing. We're gonna put this little piece on the bottom and then run that line that connects to that, uh, run it all the way up to the top of the fuel pump housing. Then we gotta drill a hole in the top and put this little fitting right there. And then we should be good to uh, uh, connect on the other side of this fitting will be that hose that runs all the way underneath the car. Which lucky enough, there's actually an extra uh, portion for us to run that line uh, next to the old fuel hoses that are in there right now. Cause Nissan pretty much, they already knew that we we're gonna be boosting this thing, so. Check it out. Right over there where my finger's pointing at, that is uh, where all the fuel hoses return to the end or to the tank or to the, you know, to the fuel pump. There's actually that little middle portion that has nothing in it. That's where we're going to be running our uh, our new fuel line. And then eventually we're going to have to heat wrap all that so that the turbos don't catch them on fire because I spent a little too much money to catch this thing on fire. So let's not do that. All right, guys. So we got our fuel pump out of the car. Uh, it's right here. We're just going to go ahead and flip this little tab down here, lift up the top and separate the two portions of the housing just a little bit. So of course we've already customized our uh, fuel pump housing to hold this big ass Walbro 485 fuel pump, um, which should be more than enough for our application and the horsepower that we're going for. What we're gonna be going for is this little piece right here. So CJM provides instructions on their website which show how to install this portion over here. All right guys, so CJM is pretty much telling us to evenly pry out this little uh, jet, jet pump right here. Um, I can't seem to get it out without excessive force and trying to break it. It's this, it's this little piece right here. You pretty much take it out. I'm gonna show you a picture of it. It's actually gray on an OEM fuel pump. That's what it really looks like. This little hole right here, what they're doing is they're drilling it larger for, um, for more fuel to get through that little hole. All right, you gotta be super careful with these because they're just like brittle plastic and they can break. But I finally got the cap off. Pull it down to remove. Oh, okay. There we go. Check it out guys, so we just got a regulator out. So this is when we take our new regulator and we just put it in that same spot, I guess, right? All right, so we're gonna go ahead and install it into the regulator cavity here. Uh-oh. That don't be fitting. Oh shit. Yeah, that's way smaller, bro. That's way smaller. Am I gonna have to drill? I'm gonna try my best to modify this, uh, this aftermarket fuel pump housing to fit our mod. Hopefully, it works. All right, so it turns out that I'm gonna have to cut into this. Um, I didn't want to, but I'm gonna have to modify it so that I can make it fasten in there. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're just gonna like cut right here vertically. We're right underneath where that clip uh, locks into place. And then we're gonna remove all these like little sticks on the inside so that it's uh, it's wide enough for 
um, the regulator to go ahead and slip right in there. Check it out guys, not too bad for a little hack job. Just went ahead and cut off those sides right there. Let's see if we can go ahead and get it to clip into place now. All right, so it actually sits in there a lot more secure. It's literally in place, it's not dangling around. I'm gonna go ahead and screw this on there and see if uh, see if it finally fits. This took way longer than I had expected it to take, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do when it comes to having aftermarket fuel pump housing. So I gotta widen this hole. All right, you know guys, nine time is the charm, come on. So much modifying to this thing. This thing was already brittle to begin with. It's probably super brittle now. Come on. Sounds like it's snapping into place. It's so close. It's seriously like so fucking close. All right, this has to be a 10th time. Let's go, number 10. I think it's actually in there. Yo, it's in there, boys. I'm trying to pull it, it's not coming out. It's sealed, it's good. We're finally done modifying this stupid housing. Now we have this cool little guy hanging off right here. Oh shit, I'm actually getting it off. Oh shit! Yo! Oh, nice! Check it out guys, we got our little fuel jet out. Oh my gosh, so we can actually widen that hole just a little bit. Um, they actually tell you the specs of how much wider you should get that hole depending on what type of fuel pump you have. So I'm gonna review that real quick and then make the changes accordingly. Sweet, I didn't think this was removable. I was too scared, but whatever, I did it. All right guys, I'm using this super tiny um, drill bit. It's a 1 16th drill bit. It's actually the exact size of the jet hole. Um, when I put it in there, there's there's a good amount of resistance on the walls, so I'm I don't really know exactly how big I should make it, and I don't really have um, the right drill bits that uh, um, that are slightly bigger than this hole. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just round it out a little bit more than it is, just to help out with some more flow, and it should be all right. So the pinhole is about 0 0.05 inches in diameter from factory for a 255 uh, pump. They say about 0 0.08 is a good starting point for larger pumps, um, 0 0.1 to 0.1 and a half um, is a good starting point. Each installation may differ due to various factors. If your pressure regulator is unable to control fuel pressure at idle, you know, when your fuel system work is completed, then the step is, uh, you know, it's going to have to be revisited for further enlargement to uh, get the correct output from the fuel jet. So I'm just gonna try and make my hole like, not double the size, but uh, a little bit less than double the size. <laughs> All right, so I would say that it's definitely at a good 0.8 or 0.9 compared to uh, what it did look like before. It is a little bit wider than, you know, factory, so um, that'll allow for a little bit more flow. I'm glad that I was able to get that out so that that won't be a limiting factor in our whole build. All right, so right in front of where all of the wires connect, we're pretty much gonna flatten out this little ribbed area. You guys can see that there's a lot of like ribs right here that help the structural rigidity of this fuel pump housing, but we're gonna have to cut away at that. Pretty much gonna have to make it look like this. So you guys can see over here, you got the ribs. Over here, he deleted it so that you can make room uh, to put this, uh, this little uh, nut right here. So in order to know where we're gonna drill, uh, we're gonna go ahead and put the nut, place it pretty much right in the middle of where we flattened out the area. All right, so we got a Sharpie right here. We're just gonna go ahead and mark a little dot in the middle there. I'm gonna remove the nut, and we're gonna make that circle a little bit darker all around. So the reason why we did that is so we can see the mark through the other side. So we can just barely see our little circle right there. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and mark it on the other side now. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark it here now because that's where we're gonna be drilling from. So this is a step drill, this is the type of drill that we should be using, but I don't have that, so I'm just gonna make it wide enough for, um, for our piece to fit right through there. Dude, that's sweet. Gonna make it pretty much face the same way as uh, the other two because they're both gonna be uh, being run uh, the same way to the uh, to the engine bay. All right, it's pretty tight. Perfect. All right, boys, that's pretty much it. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and start putting things back together. I didn't unplug anything because you can't really unplug anything except for from the fuel pump, but. That's all good. Um, a lot of people, if you guys are installing a new fuel pump while you're doing this boost build, um, I already did this, so you guys can check and see the new Walbro um, installation in one of my previous videos. Um, but I did have to cut pretty much this whole entire rim right here to fit it. I did have to cut the end of the fuel pump itself to um, make it stick down further into the tube so that uh, when you put it in the car, it doesn't, um, 
it doesn't make it difficult to put the, the cap on top of this, um, the one that's in the rear in the rear seat. So, um, if you guys even know what the fuck I'm talking about, I'm gonna go ahead and put all this back together, and uh, we've got our little uh, return hose uh, fitting right there, ready to rock. There we go, and that's what it's supposed to do. So, yeah, you wanna make sure you trim everything up if you get it. I mean, if you get a big, as big of a pump that I got, I got a 485, it's pretty big, so um, it doesn't really fit where it should go. But this thing is supposed to be able to push down so you can fit it inside your tank. Ooh, it looks so good. I'm pretty stoked. I actually did a pretty good job on this considering that it's an aftermarket housing and wasn't really supposed to fit the way it did, so I made it. Made some modifications and we made it happen, dudes. And that's what I love doing on this channel. We never give up. Smash that like button for never giving up and just keep on moving forward. We're gonna go ahead and fast forward to tomorrow so that we can start running that line. I wanna show you guys where that line goes. So we're gonna do that in the morning. I'll see you then. What up, dudes? All right, it's the next day. Um, it's super hot outside, so I'm just like sweating like a crazy guy right now. But I'm on my way over to Cylinder Head Depot. We're gonna pick up our cylinder heads. Um, they're not ready yet. I've actually got a call. Um, he was telling me that there's a uh, a couple couple issues that they ran into, of course, because working on cars never goes as planned. Looks like cylinder number four. Yeah, cylinder number four, um, the middle cylinder on the driver's side. The valve seats weren't seating correctly. Um, he had to go in there and he had to machine the valves and machine the seats and then fix the valve clearance um, after machining them. So. Uh, they took care of that, you know, it was a little bit more expensive, that was no problem. But um, they also checked like the bottom flatness of both of the uh, both of the cylinder heads. Now, they're both good enough to seal on a gasket, um, but they did see that it is like like one thousandths off. You know, the way he said it, he's like, you, he's like, if I'm talking to you as a friend, you can probably get away with it and save your money. But if I'm talking to you as a machinist, you're gonna wanna probably, you know, take care of that. And my mindset right now, I'm going boost and everything. So I went with a fully Ford short block and the decking was perfect on the short block. So I want to make sure that the decking is, is perfect on the cylinder heads too. So I'm probably going to tell them to just go ahead and do it um, for an extra 100 bucks. They are hooking me up. So we're going to go pick up the heads right now, check them out. And when we get back, we're going to finish up the fuel return system um, as far as running that line. And then uh, go from there. All right, check it out, guys. So this is the underside of my heads right now. This is the deck pretty much. Um, I wanted to see if I can get away without the decking them, see how good, you know, the surface is. They use a down indicator. But you can actually feel indentation right here from the fire ring that left uh, left an impression there on the deck. So I'm just going to go ahead and spend the extra money. We're going to get them diamond cut, and it's pretty much going to look real nice and uh, real nice and glossy, uh, just like these ones over here. This is pretty much the goal that we're going for. This way we can get it all done right the first time. Steve, thank you so much for all your help, your customer service, your your quality of work. I it's, want it right. It's perfect, man. Me too. I want it right. Me too. So that's the man Steve over here, Cylinder Head Depot. Um, definitely like a huge help in-depth like description of everything of what's wrong with the heads what we're doing with the heads in depth as far as like pricing point for each individual service on the heads i really appreciate people who are very in-depth uh and very passionate for what they do and this is definitely this is definitely one of those one of those guys so for sure um if you guys are looking to get your I gotta change my air mix motor, the thing is clicking. If you guys are looking to get your cylinder heads done, definitely visit Cylinder Head Depot. If you guys are in South Florida, they're located in Davie, Florida. So we're gonna let him deck uh, the bottom of the heads, make sure they are perfectly flat. He's gonna go ahead and diamond cut them, um, which is the more uh, expensive route. But um, in total, I'm pretty much spending about $550 on the heads. Now, a full job on these type of heads are pretty much around like $700. Um, I could have gotten everything done. I could have had them completely taken apart instead of just like the ones that weren't seating right um, for 700 bucks and had everything redone um, perfectly. You know what I mean? But in this case, I was trying to go more of a budget and um, we kind of found these issues as we dived into it. So um, next time, I feel like we should do everything uh, up front. Um, instead of trying to, you know, piece it together, you know, here and there. So if you guys are getting your heads done, 700 bucks, he'll literally do everything. It'll make them perfect for your boosted build or whatever you're going to do. Um, but either way, our heads are going to be our shy of perfect, uh, you know, for, for our build. And honestly, we could have just not done anything to them, and maybe they still would have been okay. Um, I was just worried about those cam, cam journals, but he gave me a lot of uh, respect points as far as putting uh, the valve clearance, you know, exactly where it needs to be. Um, so that was pretty cool. Cool dude. We'll be back in two hours. Luckily for you guys, it's two seconds. 
Just kidding, we're actually back at the crib right now. I'm gonna save picking up those cylinder heads for the next video because that's when we are gonna be putting the block all back together. This video, I just wanted to get that fuel system situated and we're able to get the fuel pump done and it's super hot out here, oh my gosh, but I just took care of running the fuel line. So this is that hose that I ran that came from the top of the fuel pump housing. It pretty much runs along with all of the other fuel lines and I got it zip tied just to re-secure, make sure everything is secured um, all the way down the side of the vehicle up to the tank and we got it all connected right here. So looking nice and good, everything's tight, everything's sealed and I'm super stoked. We can't really finish up the rest of the fuel return system until we have the engine in of course. So we're gonna be waiting for that. With that being said, this video is gonna end right here. I just wanna give you guys a huge thank you. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you guys for all of your love and your support on these videos. Um, I seriously cannot thank you guys enough. I really appreciate you guys. Make sure you guys smash that like button for this twin turbo boosted G35 build. How much horsepower you guys think I'm gonna make on this car? This is gonna be so sick. Let me know down in the comments. If you guys wanna support this build, this twin turbo fully forged G35 build for some boost, you guys can go over to AASupply.com. You guys can purchase some merch there. We got t-shirts, jet tags, stickers, air fresheners, all that good stuff. Thanks again for watching. I'm gonna catch you guys in the next video when we start putting this motor together. See you then.